IndyCar is going hybrid finally after many, many years. A lot of folks are asking, what's the difference between IndyCar's new energy recovery system and the one that's been in play in IMSA and their hybrid GTP cars? A lot of topics to explore, so let's get started. IndyCar's energy recovery system is like a sprinter in the 40-yard dash. Instant power, but only in short bursts before it needs to recharge. IMSA's energy recovery system is like a marathon runner. Strong, sustained power, great range. One system is small, the other is large. One is geared towards the driver, the other works more traditionally in the background. One system is focused on adding power, the other blends seamlessly with its internal combustion engines. One system is low voltage, the other is high. One is made within the series, the other is made for the series. In almost every category, the approaches taken to hybridization by IndyCar and IMSA are as different and unique as the cars themselves. And as a former race car mechanic and engineer, they are fascinating to explore. To start, there's only two things the IndyCar and IMSA energy recovery systems have in common. The first is with a vendor, Brightloop, which makes an electronic component found in both systems. The second is what we call the systems. Both series declined to come up with interesting names for their hybrids. And since IMSA's unit has gone without for nearly two seasons, We'll anoint IndyCar's unit with one since it's new to the world. And as such, IndyCar Communications VP Dave First nicknamed theirs Harry the Hybrid while we were recently chatting at the Indy 500. So that's what I'm calling it. Welcome, Harry. Uh, back to more serious matters. Our first video will focus on the cars and components. Our second video will delve into the performance aspects of both packages and if there's time, I might do a few more before IndyCar goes hybrid this weekend at Mid-Ohio. With IMSA and its hybrid GTP models that debuted in 2023, brand new cars were designed from the ground up to carry large lithium-ion batteries. Those purpose-built units hold an incredible amount of energy to deploy, made possible by creating a big battery that could fill the cavernous space formed in the passenger side of the GTP cockpits to house IMSA spec energy storage system. In IndyCar, the challenge was far more difficult. Series chose not to commission a new car, designed from the outset to carry an energy recovery system. Instead, the bare minimum of free space to use, the intensely difficult task its creators faced was to devise a system that would fit inside the equivalent of a high school backpack. Left with no room in its Dallara DW12 chassis to follow the established lithium-ion battery path taken by Formula One, Formula E, and IMSA, IndyCar engine supplier Chevrolet and Honda, who took over the hybridization project from the series in 2022, went down the only path they could based on the minimal amount of room it had to work with in the car. Where IMSA made use of the ample space available on the passenger side of its GTP monocoques to package most of its hybrid components, Chevy and Honda had no choice but to play within that backpack-sized cavity found in the bell housing. The bell housing is a structure that connects the engines to the transmissions and rear suspensions in open wheel and prototype machines. And with the precious space to place some form of energy storage system in the bell housing, miniaturization was required with IndyCar's system. If it helps, we're going to use three acronyms a lot more going forward. So for the sake of clarity, it's ESS, the energy storage system. And IndyCar sits on the top side in the bell housing. MGU, the motor generator unit, sits directly below the IndyCar ESS. And then we have ERS, which is the entire device, the energy recovery system. Between the two brands, Chevy and its partners at Ilmore Engineering tackled the MGU. We'll get to the MGUs later in the video. And with its ESS experience from Formula One, Honda, through its in-house Honda Racing Corporation US division, took charge of designing the ESS. The only path forward for HRC US with the ESS was the compact energy solution provided by supercapacitors. So that's what it created in partnership with a company named Skeleton. The end result is what's called the IndyCar Energy Storage System, which has a model name of 20-SP-1 with the 20 signifying the 20 supercapacitors packaged into each unit. On its own, IndyCar's ESS weighs 46.3 pounds. Behind it, the tiny DC to DC converter from Brightloop, the BBSP model, accounts for 0.57 pounds. At IMSA, 
It worked with Bosch to supply the majority of its ERS components like the MGU, inverter, hybrid control unit, and the electronic braking system. IMSA tasked the company formerly known as Williams Advanced Engineering, known now as Fortescue WAE, to make that sizable lithium-ion battery and the carbon fiber plate that holds most of the ESS items. Fully assembled, the Fortescue WAE battery, Bosch's inverter, the MCU 4.4 motor controller unit, and the Bright Loop M760 DC to DC converter you see is named the ESS Compartment Assembly. It weighs 135.4 pounds. That battery accounts for 77 pounds, and that's with coolant added. For IndyCar's ERS is tucked away in an inaccessible metal enclosure between the engine and transmission, IMSA's ESS compartment assembly is designed to be installed and removed without having to pull most of the car apart. Due to the bell housing being the only free space to use, IndyCar was stuck with having to hide the ERS away from easy interaction, which is an accepted drawback. Using a manual lift, IMSA's ESS assembly is elevated into the tub and held in place by 20 bolts that sit flush in that carbon fiber plate. The Rolex 24 Daytona in 2023, Porsche Penske Motorsport had an issue with its ESS, was able to pull their Porsche 963 GTP into the garage, put it up on stands, remove one side of the floor, remove the ESS, grab its replacement, install the new assembly, and button the car up to return to the race in just over 30 minutes, which is mighty impressive. Unfortunately, if there's a need to replace Harry the Hybrid in an IndyCar race, it will be a showstopper. Moving to the MGUs, IndyCar has a custom unit overseen by Chevy Nilmore. It's made by MPEL. It's the MPEL 180, which connects directly to the engine and transmission through a common input shaft. That means it can only spin as fast as the engine. IndyCar's RPM limit for its engines is 12,000. So that's where the MPEL 180 will normally live for its maximum RPMs. Keep in mind, Chevy and Honda engines can exceed 12,000 RPMs while downshifting hard. So the limit set for the MGU is actually 13,000 RPMs, just to give it a little bit of headroom while harvesting under braking when the driver is downshifting. Size-wise, IndyCar's MGU is slightly smaller, lighter, and less powerful than IMSA's MGU. IMSA hired Bosch to develop its MGU, the C2.4 model, and it lives in the bell housings of the Acuras, BMWs, Cadillacs, Lamborghinis, and Porsches in the GTP class. And with separate gearing in place, it spins up to 20,000 RPMs. Key difference between the IndyCar ERS and IMSA's ERS is the combining of the ESS and MGU in the same space in that Delar DW12 chassis which is a novel solution. And the separation of the ESS in the MGU and GTP cars, that's the more common approach. In a perfect world, IndyCar's ESS would be somewhere in front of the engine, which would help with the car's weight distribution. But as we know, it wasn't possible. But look for that to change when the next IndyCar chassis is commissioned. The ERS units are also controlled in different manners. In IndyCar, the choice was taken to stick with the electronic control units already in the car. So Chevy and Honda use the existing McLaren Tag 400i engine control unit, the ECU, to manage the ESS and MGU. In IMSA, the series doesn't rely on the ECU to control the ERS. It's gone with a dedicated spec hybrid control unit box, the Bosch HCU 50.4. As well, IMSA allows its GTP manufacturers to pick the ECU of their preference. And those various ECU models also interact with ERS units. The software side of hybridization is yet another place where IndyCar and IMSA have followed their own paths. With IndyCar's TAG 400i, Chevy, Honda, and their teams are not allowed to write their own code or manipulate Harry the Hybrid software in any way. In IMSA, GTP manufacturers are allowed to write their own software to control the ERS, and that's been described as a huge point of attraction. Down the road, when IndyCar likely moves to a battery-based ERS solution in a new car, I would expect the software side to be opened up for manufacturers to play with. And in IMSA, it's an area where they can show their expertise in hybridization. Dimensionally, IndyCar's ERS is vertical, 
Well, IMSA is as low and long. Here, the hybrid comes pre-assembled by Ilmore Engineering in Dallara's Bell Housings. IndyCar teams uncrate the ERS and start building it out with all the studs to hold the suspension mounts, dampers, and the rest of the items that attach to the bell housing. Altogether, the stacked arrangement of the ESS above the MGU makes for an impressively compact arrangement. In its bell housing carriage, IndyCar's complete ERS units lives within a home that's 18 inches tall, 22 and 1 8 inches wide, and just 13 and 3 quarters of an inch long, separated from the 32.8 pound Dallara bell housing, IndyCar's ESS and MGU weigh 93.8 pounds. With the ERS installed in the bell housing and with the coolant pump and hoses, collector tank and the nuts and bolts and studs to hold everything together, the completed spec ERS bell housings handed off by Ilmore weighs 126.6 pounds. Throw in a gallon of coolant at approximately eight pounds the entire package is just under 135 pounds. And to try and compensate for the onboarding of that new weight, IndyCar commissioned new bell housings from Dallara and transmission cases from x that trade the heavier aluminum castings for lighter magnesium, which carved 6.2 pounds from the bell housing and 24 pounds from the transmission. Together, it's a saving of 30.2 pounds which offsets the new weight from the ERS package rather nicely. Put it all together, the minimum weight of the hybrid Indy cars expected to go up 105 pounds in the rule book. In GTP, the rectangular ESS package is 12 inches high, 15 inches wide, and 28 inches long. On the scales, IMSA's ESS compartment assembly is 135.4 pounds. The Bosch C2.4 MGU is 46.3 pounds for a combined 181.7 pounds. Add a few more pounds for MGU coolant, plus the coolant hoses, large wiring bundles and connectors that link the ESS in the cockpit to the MGU and the bell housing, uh, push the system close to 190 pounds. For IndyCar, its ERS is a marvel of packaging, all thanks to Chevy and Honda, and makes as much power and torque and holds as much energy as possible while working within such tight confines. For IMSA, its ERS makes full use of that added space, is available in a bigger car, and as a result, its GTP hybrids pack a bigger and more sustained punch thanks to that big old Fortescue WAE battery and that big Bosch MGU. Next in our series, we'll dive into the outputs, performance capabilities of the IndyCar and IMSA hybrids and thanks once again for watching here on Racing.